officially live, guys. So we are going to continue our discussion about exponent rules, right? Yeah. And so this is part three of our little discussion, okay? And so we are going to learn, in particular, a rule that Nate's group, that, that my group was doing on the homework last night that Nate's group wasn't. And so that now everybody will be on the same page. And it's a weird rule. And it says this, n to the negative uh, m is equal to 1 over n to the positive m, yep. which is very interesting, right? Notice, let's really look at this and see what is actually happening. If I had, I'll use a real, a real example. If I said um, x to the uh, negative 4, right? Yep. If I, how would I turn that into a fraction right now? I mean, without moving things around. One for x equals. Without moving things around. You can put it you over put one. Put it, right? Can you, isn't that true? For yeah. any number, you could put it over one and it would be a fraction. Yeah. All right? Mm -hmm. So we could immediately turn it into a fraction, right? Immediately turn it into a fraction by doing that. Now, what this rule is really saying is this. If, this is what the rule is saying, if you move um, a base with an exponent, Exponent switch. Uh, how, how do I say that? The sign of the exponent is reversed. Thank you. The sign of the exponent is reversed. In other words, if it's positive, it's then negative. If it's negative, it's then positive. It is reversed. So we're, we'll we'll talk about this now. What is before I start doing stuff, what is the hidden coefficient of this term right one here? One. Does everybody see that? You know that there's a one there, right? What is the negative four effect? It only affects what it's next to. It only affects the x. It does not affect the one. So the one stays there, right? But watch. I'm going to just circle the negative four exponent and what it affects. It only affects the x, right? You might want to take notes. You can use that. But you might, you might, you might find it some fun now. Well, you should still take notes because then you can learn it twice. Right. I mean, it's just an idea. But, so look, this says if I bring, if I bring this thing across the fraction line, this is the fraction line, right? This thing right here. If I bring this downstairs. I can't, I'm going to leave that one there. That's not being affected. So suddenly I've got a one upstairs, and now I'm bringing this downstairs, but just by bringing it across that fraction line, that exponent changes its sign. It's instead of negative, it becomes positive. So oh, I've got one over x to the fourth. Yes. I have a question. Yes. What if you had parentheses around the one and the uh, x? with the negative 4 next to it, wouldn't you have to move the 1 as well? Okay, and that's interesting. So let's try that. Let's four. try that. So you're saying like this, right? Yeah. Yeah. It be zero However, what is, right the, what is the hidden coefficient right here? One. Ah. Right? Yeah. There's always a hidden coefficient of 1. Can you just put parentheses around that one too? Sure. And then there's a hidden coefficient of 1 right here. And then, okay, we'll keep doing this for a while, right? Okay, right? So there's always going to be one upstairs, right? Or something. 
So basically what you're doing, you're just like taking away the negative and replacing it, or like turning it upside down, like the yeah. x four. Oh, that's all you do? Yeah. So say so that that floor was So let's try a few so you can see so a few. Like say that floor is a positive on the first one. If you switched it, would that be a negative floor? Yeah. 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 So, like so Luca asked this. Different. This is a very interesting question. Luca said this. Look, what, let's say we had x to the fourth, and we turn it into a fraction, and let's say I brought this downstairs, then suddenly it would be 1 over x to the negative 4. You're right. That, you don't this is, and this is outrageously useful in exponent when you're solving problems. But outrageously useful. Wouldn't you have to flip it again because it's negative? Yeah. <laughs> uh, there is also a rule. Oh. There, there is, so, so there is a rule that you have to know. And this rule says, um, uh, what does it say? Um, uh, uh, never leave your answer, your answer with a negative exponent. Never leave your answer with a negative exponent. Therefore, if I gave you, let's let's just start, let's start a fresh here. Let's try a few problems. If I gave you this, six x to the negative two, right? Mm -hmm. I can't leave this. That looks like a b after six. <laughs> Doesn't look like anything either. I know. What that is. Okay. I don't know. Whatever. Six x to the negative two. Never leave your final answer with a negative exponent. So I'm going to put it over one, right? And I'm going to circle with the negative two effects, and it's only the x. That's going to come downstairs. So my answer is six over x to the now positive two. Does that make sense? You see that? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's example one. Let's try example two. Mm -hmm. Let's say I had, um, um, let's say I had uh, x to the fourth over x to the seventh. Now, remember that rule that we did last night? So it's going to be equals the same bases. So I'm going to write my base x. And 4 minus 7, right? 4 minus 7. You with me? So that equals x to the negative 3, right? Okay, that's my answer, except that there's this doggone rule that says never leave your answer with a negative exponent, right? So I have to turn this into, I'm, gonna, I'm making a fraction again, and this is going to go downstairs. The hidden 1 is going to stay upstairs. So I have 1 over x to the positive 3. Got it? Making sense? Yeah. Right, here's another example. What if I had 4x to the negative 3 times 6x to the negative, um, I don't know, negative 5. Right? I'm multiplying. Now, when I do this, can I multiply just the coefficients first? Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 4 times 6 is 24. 24. And then x to the negative 3 times x to the negative 5 yeah. is x to the negative, negative eight. 8. Ah, so that's my answer except yeah. I can't leave a negative, negative exponent, exponent in my answer, right? So I'm going to turn it into a fraction. And I'm going to move only what the negative effect, ma negative eight affects. It does not affect the twenty-four. It only affects what it's next to. So okay. that's going to come downstairs, and suddenly I've got twenty-four over x to the positive eight. Hey Gary, yes. if you have an exponent, I mean uh, just a, a variable like uh, twenty-four x to the eighth, can you ever solve for x? Sure. Well, you have to have an equal sign. There's yeah. no, I mean, there's no, it's not an equation. This is just an expression, right? Yeah. If it's just an expression, then the answer is no. 
But if it's an equation, then yes. Now, it might be hard, yeah. <laughs> but you can, right? What if it equals uh, seven? So, you know, if it's a positive number, right? Every number has a an eighth root of something, uh, right? If it's seven, then you do twenty-four times seven, and then you do eight. Yeah. So, anyways, yes. So the answer is yes. So, um, can I erase this stuff? Yeah. 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 Is it making sense? Do you guys get this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Homework. Good. Hang on. Hang on. I want to keep throwing a few more problems at you because. Making a mess. Okay. So, what if I gave you this? Um, 6x to the, this is number third, what, 4? To the third. So, 6x, let's that? see, to the third over 9x to the eighth. All right. First of all, before I get involved in the x's, I always look at my numbers, my fractions. Six ninths. Can I simplify that? Yeah. Three. Three. Three goes into both of those. So three. three you guys know how to do this? Three, three goes into six two, two, two times. To the three goes into nine three times. So suddenly I have two thirds, right? And then I have oh, x. Two over three x to the x to the negative. X to five. the three minus eight. Yeah. You got me. Mm -hmm. So that gives me. Two thirds, that's two thirds x to the negative five. Or now, now, now does this belong technically in when I don't have it in the fraction? Where does that belong? Does that belong in the numerator or the denominator? The denominator. Numerator. Numerator. The top one. I think it's gonna be the yeah, it's, it is. It's going to be the top one because think about it. If I was going to make this a fraction, I would put the one underneath. So this, this x to the negative 5 belongs to the 2. So I could write it like this. 2x to the negative 5 over 3. You with me? Yeah. You see? Now, that's my answer except for this doggone rule that says I can't leave my answer with a negative exponent. So I circle what my negative exponent affects. It's only the x that it affects. <coughs> That's coming down. And so my final answer is 2 over, and then the 3x to the fifth. The x to the fifth now goes with the 3, right? Um, now, I'm running out of time. All right, so five. Let me let's try this one. What if I gave you something like this? X to the two, y to the eight, over x to the eight, y to the three. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do them one at a time. I've got x to the same base as x's, x to the 2 minus 8. I've got x to the 2 minus 8. And then I've got same base as y, y to the 8 minus 3. Okay? So that equals, this looks like this is what that equals. Let's see what that equals. So that equals, I'll do it here. That equals x to the negative 6, y to the 5th. Now, that's my answer, except for this doggone rule that says I can't leave a negative exponent in my answer. So I create a fraction, right, by drawing a line and putting it over 1. And what do I move? I'm going to move x to the negative 6 downstairs, right? These are not same bases, by the way, right? So I can't combine them. So my final answer is y to the fifth over x to the 6. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to teach today. Yeah. And then, um, subscribe. Very good. Yeah.